Only a handful survive the RAF's selection and training system for its most exciting plane, the Harrier Jump Jet. Producing a frontline Harrier pilot is an expensive business. Training costs run into seven figures. They make even a massive investment like this simulator cost effective. Simulators reduce the exposure of a valuable pilot to risks involved in converting to the Harrier, a plane whose demands are at the limits of man's capacity to coordinate thought and action under stress. But simulation can't be the real thing. Planes do crash, pilots do eject, and some die. The RAF wants men who can do the job in combat, but in peacetime, all the pressures are to minimise risk to its investment. OK, Roger. Um, we've had a bit of a layoff for weather, so what we're going to do now is uh, a V-stall consolidation sortie. We will have tested the nozzles and the um, duct pressure downwind and leave the nozzles aft and then into the finals turn. Certainly if it's too low, it will end up low here and you'll never get your speed stroke ADD just prior to touchdown. Would we'll be able to fly a normal finals turn in the ADD or it'll have to be wider downwind? Slightly wider, mm -hmm. but I'll show you actually on the sortie that if we want to, we can fly as tight as any other aeroplane. We will then progress to the normal and most efficient way of landing a V-stall machine, which will be the variable nozzle technique, or the wiggly nozzle as we say in the trade. Once again, a standard circuit pattern, so you don't have to worry about uh, differing circuits. The key position again, once again we'll have that in the finals turn, not straight out this time. Here you select 70 nozzles, shove up the power to 85, 90%, depending on whether we're below or above hover weight, double decker bus off the runway, about 20 feet-ish, crack the nozzles to the hover stop, hand back on the power, cushion the landing, plonk it on the runway, hand off the power and into your power nozzle brake. Straight through ground effect, plonk it on the uh, concrete, throttle to idle, nozzles aft, and uh, I'm in the habit of always putting the flap up because that's what we do on a field deployment, but you can leave them down on this occasion. Now we've got lights are out, running looks good. Off the ground, nozzling away. Despite all its efforts, the RAF can never be certain that it's selected the right few from its hundreds of entrants. Monitoring and training continues long after the operational conversion unit. It's still uh, very special, not least of all because when you get through the OCU, you've, uh, you've been trained to fly the jet, but you find out when you reach a squadron that you really know uh, very little. So knowing that they're going to do the right thing when a tricky situation arises, and uh, thirdly, I suppose, that you don't want them to panic in any way. But uh, if they can deal with a situation calmly, tell you what's... Excuse me. One squadron, Flight Lieutenant Luda. OK. Cheers. Wrong number. <laughs> no panics. <laughs>